In his famous commencement speech, David Foster Wallace tells the story of two fish who swim along. At some point, the two young fish meet an older fish who happens to be swimming the other direction, who nods at them and says, morning, boys, how's the water? Now, the two young fish swim on, and at some point, one looks at the other and says, what the hell is water? Now, indeed, what the hell is water? Did any of you ever thought about that? Now imagine that you are one of the two young fish who actually realizes that this is water. And by this realization, you can actually start enjoying the water, you can start exploring the water. And as you swim along and as you enjoy your life, because you notice that there's different temperatures to water, you also notice that there are different currents. And those currents in some way affect your life and behavior because sometimes you have to swim in a very hard way, and it's hard to swim if you swim against the current, and then if you swim with the currents, it's much easier. And you notice that actually the same currents affect other fish. And so once you know how it affects you, you can actually know how it affects other fish, and therefore you can be predict their behavior. And so you know that there is water, and at some point, maybe you know there is air. You decide to swim up, and you jump up and say, whoa, this is like a different universe. It's not wet, and it's not sticky. This is new. And so you know what is water, and you know what is air. And then maybe, just maybe, at some point, you notice that there is land. And you get curious about land. 400 million years ago, the first fish came on land and start the revolution of evolution of all of the species that we know. Now, this fish was a rebel, was a revolutionary, and that fish was our ancestor. That fish hacked the system by realizing what is water. Now, what about the other fish, the one that didn't realize what is water? Well, that fish probably still swims around and looks at other fish and say, what the hell was that water? And that fish probably sooner or later will end up on a fish hook, on a fish ball, or on our plate. Fast forward a couple hundred million years to fairly recent times of 399 BC, we find ourselves in the great city of Athens. At the Athens Square, the town square, there's an elderly man walking around and talking to the youth, and he's asking them weird questions. He says, well, why do you do what you do? Could you do something else? Why do you think what you think? He's challenging their assumptions. He's saying, why do you think this is impossible? Why do you think this is possible? Who told you so? He's telling them to know themselves because he says, if you know yourself, you also know the gods. Now, his name is Socrates. He is the father of Western philosophy. He was a rebel revolutionary and the first modern hacker. Socrates was sentenced to death for impiety and corruption of the youth, but his know thyself is one of the best hacking tools ever invented. Fast forward two and a half thousand years later, today. Today, we don't worship the same gods as people in the Athens did, but we worship other things. We don't gather and discuss things on the Agora Square, but we do gather and discuss things in different spaces, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat. Today, software is eating up the world. Code is everything, and everything is code. The computational power of machines doubles every 18 months. Change is becoming the only constant, and systems around us are getting hacked, whether that be technical system, political system, or human system. So the question is, what is our water? My name is Patricia, and I have spent quite a bit of time researching how and why humans get hacked. Initially, as an academic, I researched the dark hacks of history. That is, I researched what were the hacks in the history that led to a downgrade of humanity. My research was focused on the psychological mechanism behind genocide, hatred, bigotry, and violence. Today, as an entrepreneur, I study how humans, teams, and organizations can hack, rewire, and upgrade themselves. Some people say what I do is mind hacking. And so, as any nerdy hacker, I'm fascinated by tech, and I appreciate good code that's efficient and well-written. Now, the code and technology I talk about right now 
is organic in its nature. It has the ability of wire and rewire itself as it interacts with the environment. And no, it is not the new super quantum computer. It is the technology of you and me. It is the human technology. It's built out of or emerged out of 100 billion neurons, 100 trillion synaptic connections, 31 spinal nerves that carry information at the speed of 40, 400 kilometers per hour. Now, this technology makes us humans a living code, one that wires and rewires itself as we live, learn, and evolve. Now, on top of this wetware, we have software. We call this software psychological OS. Now, psychological OS consists of our thoughts, memories, stories that we tell ourselves and tell others, assumptions, biases, expectations. And this software runs in the background, like any good software, like a software of your computer or your smartphone. Because we all know that the best technology is seamless and invisible, just like electricity, just like water. Because this is our water. Now, this is the layer also where we get hacked, or we can hack ourselves. Talking about hacking, the world is new, but the concept of hacking has existed and accompanied us as humanity since the dawn of humanity. And it started with tribal elders and tribal leaders telling stories over bonfire. And those stories later on spread far and wide as the print was invented and books got invented. And then those stories got multiplied and amplified as mass media, mass propaganda got introduced. And now those stories, with two billion people connected in a single app, those stories have the ability to connect us and make us collaborate or disconnect us by creating digital eco-chambers. Today, more than half of the world's populations is connected by, through, and with, tech with technology called the internet. Now, with such a connectivity and nonlinearity, mind viruses have the ability of spreading as quickly as a computer virus. And so we will get hacked. Pinging, beeping, buzzing, like me, heart me, follow me, upload me, share me, buy me. We are getting hacked. There's a very famous book in business innovation field, and it has a lovely title, Change or Die. Now, I would change it for self-innovation. I would say it's hack or be hacked. So how do we do that? How do we hack ourselves? Well, it all starts with questions. It was the older fish that was swimming along and said, how's the water, guys? And got the two young fish thinking. So the Socratic method is actually based on asking questions. Good question has the ability to show us the nature of reality. It has the ability to show us what is water. It has the ability to show us what is our own code. A good question has the ability to help you hack, rewind, and upgrade yourself. Now, so let's hack something. And I thought for today, since we're at 10, we might want to hack the concept of impossible, because why not? In order to hack, you really need to understand the deep psychological wiring of this human OS. Um, I want to share with you a framework we have developed that has four parts. And those are the four parts of how we as humans get programmed, how we get hacked, but it's also the four ways how we can hack ourselves. And it starts with the head. Now, the head is our cognitive OS, and that means this is where our beliefs live, this is where our assumptions live, this is where the category of possible and impossible lives. What, did so what Socrates did is he would walk around and he would say, tell people, can you embrace the opposite? Can you think that what you think is impossible is actually possible? And that really is the hack for the head. What would happen if you took the impossible out of the bucket of impossible and put it into possible? What are the thought and cognitive consequences of thinking that something that seemed to be impossible is actually possible? And it's just a thought experiment. But we know that everything starts in the head. And then there's the heart. This is the symbolic source and house of human emotions. Now, human emotions have a very wide spectrum. They go all the way from the dark ones, or so-called dark ones, the fear, despair, terror, anger, all the way to the lighter ones, inspiration, awe, wonder. And so, 
The human heart has the ability to hold it all. The question for the heart is, what am I feeling right now? And is what am I feeling leading to breakdowns, breakthroughs, or breakdown throughs? And you will be surprised how many impossible things got happen from this side of the human spectrum. How many impossible things got happen because somebody was frustrated or angry with the status quo. And then we have the body. The body is our hardware. We go where our body goes. Some psychologists would say that the body never lies, that the body always keeps the score as opposed to the head. Now, the question for the body is, what is my body communicating to me that I need to acknowledge in order to become the version of myself that can actually hack the impossible? And then we have people. We have other people. This is our social ecosystem. We are hardwired to be social. Other people hack us. Other people inspire us. Other people teach us. And so the question is, who can I bring into my tribe? Who can I bring into my community that will actually help me hack me and help me upgrade me? Now, the title of this talk was Hacking Humanity, the Next Revolution, with a question mark. I'm actually not good with questions, so. And so, will hacking humanity be the next revolution? I don't know, and I don't think anybody knows. We live in exponential and nonlinear times for this human race, where small change can lead to a big difference. But what I do know is that it took a couple of brave, courageous, and rebellious fish to decide and say, this is water, and decide to go on land. And that started a revolution of evolution for all of us. And I'd like to end with something called the Hacker's Manifesto. Hacker's Manifesto was published in January 1986. And it was the cornerstone of the hacker movement all over the world. Written by and intended for the hacker community, the computer hacking community, I think today it applies to all of us. Because by the fact that we're human, we're also all hackers. We have the ability to hack, rewire, and upgrade ourselves, and therefore, hack, rewire, and upgrade humanity. And it says, I am a hacker, and this is my manifesto. You may stop this individual, but you can't stop us all. After all, we are alike. And so I thank you, fellow hackers. <laughs>